The most dominant feature of the polar regions is ice. If you're going to work at the poles, you need to get familiar with some of the basics. Ice sheets. In both the North and South Pole, there are huge masses of ice called ice sheets. They form as snow falls and collects, and over time the snow gets compacted and turned into ice. And these ice sheets are huge and heavy. We're talking about gigatons of ice, and they move very slowly from the center to the ocean. Glaciologists and geophysicists often describe the flow of ice sheets like pancake batter that flows slowly in the middle but speeds up as you get to the edges. Glaciers are smaller than ice sheets and are found anywhere that snow accumulates year after year. Glaciers also fringe the ice sheets, quickly transporting ice from these massive inland reservoirs towards the ocean. Not only does this movement shape the land, but when it gets to the sea, the glaciers break off or calve into icebergs. Icebergs are the broken off pieces that float around in the sea, eventually melting. They're part of a cycle. The snow accumulates, turns into ice, it slowly moves to the ocean, breaks off, melts, and then the water cycles into the air and it snows again. As the climate warms though, if there's more ice breaking off and melting than accumulating in snow, sea levels will rise. Sea ice is water in the ocean that freezes during the winter. Unlike icebergs, which can be hundreds of meters thick, sea ice is usually much thinner, like a few meters. As the seasons change, the amount of sea ice changes because some of it melts in the warmer months. Ice that's floating in the ocean is also a crucial part of the food web because algae growing on the underside of the ice is an important food source for other polar marine creatures. On land, water in the soil can also freeze, and in some parts it's been frozen for thousands of years. And since it's cold year round, it never thaws. That's called permafrost. But with climate change, a lot of places that used to have permafrost are beginning to thaw in the summer. So ice is a dominant feature at the poles, but it also comes in various forms. As a polar scientist, plan on getting familiar with all of them.